Anyone think they know the Greek alphabet? Okay, my two-year-old daughter knows it, right? So you lot got to fix up quick. <laughs> we, we got 30 minutes to learn the Greek alphabet. Um, and it should be fun doing this. After we've learned the Greek alphabet, we're going to take a short break. And then we get into some Bible text in the Greek. Now, you might be confused at some of the pronunciations, especially if you did algebra or physics at school. We're not going to be using those pronunciations. We're going to be using Erasmian pronunciations. Okay, this is what they reckon. There's big debate over it, but they reckon maybe this was the accent or the pronunciations, sorry, that the New Testament used. But there's big debates about it. It doesn't really matter too much. For the longest time, I pronounced all my Greek in a London accent. And then I read, and you can see DVDs of me saying Greek words in a London accent. It's quite funny. And then I read something where someone was slating someone in a paper they wrote, and they were saying, this person doesn't even know how to pronounce Greek words. And I thought, you know, just to save me getting slated on some website somewhere, I'm going to start pronouncing them properly. It feel a bit funny trying to do it, but... Okay, so yeah, you're going to be learning how to pronounce it. And there seems to be a difference between the way English and American guys do some things in Greek. And we're going to do it the American way, because I'm married to a wonderful American. And the, the plain truth is, most of the New Testament resources out there are by Americans. So... You don't want to be like me and learn the English stuff and then later get confused when you look at American stuff. So we just do it American style Right, here we go. There is the Greek alphabet, okay? It's not too hard. What's the first letter there? Alpha. alpha. What's next? Beta. Beta. What's next? Oh, good. Next? Delta. Okay, let's just keep going through it then. Epsilon. Zeta. Eta. Theta. Iota. Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, P, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Ki, Psi, Omega. Okay, now, there's a song that we can do for this. Make, makes it easier, okay? Okay, I feel bad for people watching this on DVD because they're going to have me singing right up close to the mic. Okay, now as soon as you've got it, join in because I don't want to be left hanging on this one, all right? <laughs> if you leave me hanging, I'll make you pay later in some of the exercises. All right, so it goes. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, c, omicron, p, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, phi, ki, psi, omega. Nice and easy. We're going to try that one more time, but give it a bit more life, yeah? All right, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, omicron, p, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, phi, ki, psi, omega. Great. If you see Jay the late, I'll start singing it. She'll join in with you. Okay. Now, reason, one of the reasons why it's good to know the alphabet is because when you look up words in Greek dictionaries, it's alphabetical order. Um, so you need to know where to go to look for the, the letter, the same way you would in an English dictionary. Now, just check on the pronunciations. A, alpha is A as in father. R. Ah. Okay. Beta is B as in bet. It's a b sound. These are nice and easy, these first few ones. Then gamma is a g as in get, so it's a g. Right? Delta is a d as in dog, so it's a d. So, so far, these are real easy. Okay, now we've got epsilon, which is the e in met. It's an e sound. E, okay, and it's epsilon. Now, if you get confused between epsilon and eta, just remember how they're pronounced. Epsilon, E, it's that E sound, okay? And then the, uh, the eta is pronounced A, eta as in obey. So that's the difference between epsilon and eta. Right, 
We missed that one in the middle though, which is Zeta, which is the Z in zebra. Okay, now if you find it in the middle of a word like baptizo, you pronounce it with a DZ. So if it's in the middle of a word, like after an iota, it's going to have a DZ, a Z sound. But if it's at the beginning of a word, it's going to have a Z sound. You'll notice that as we pronounce it later, you hear certain words like baptizo. When you read it, it looks like it's baptizo, but you put in that D sound there. Okay. What I should point out is back with the gamma, when you've got two gammas together, <laughs> it's a frightening thought, isn't it? <laughs> when you've got, a, sorry. When you got two gammas together, you pronounce it as in an NG. So you might have seen the word that looks like it's pronounced agalos, meaning angel or messenger. It's actually pronounced angelos, even though there's no, there doesn't look like there's an N sound in there. The two Gs together make an NG sound. Okay, eta is an A sound, as in obey. Then we've got theta, which is a TH, think. Now, this is where it's really important to lose your street habits, okay? I find this so hard. When you're talking about the tribulation, the Greek word is thelipsis. But I, I dropped my THs when I left school. You know, well, actually in the last two years of school when I thought I was big and hard enough to take on the teachers. And I stopped saying my THs. And then when I say Greek, instead of saying thelipsis, I say philipsis. But it sounds common and people are going to diss you and say you don't know what you're talking about. So try and put a TH in there. Then we got Iota. Iota is an I as in hit or as in Iota, that I sound. Then K, nice and easy, Kappa. K as in keep, it's a K sound. Lambda, harder to learn because it don't look like an L. This Lambda is an L as in let. Then we've got Mu. Some people pronounce it Mu. I leave that up to you how you want to say it, mu or mu. And that's an M sound as in met. Okay, so when you see that funny shape there, that's an M. Then we've got this, which is called a nu, which is an N sound. Make sure you don't think it's a V sound. It's an N sound. Okay, it's N as in net. It's a N sound and it's called a nu. Probably one of the hardest ones at the beginning because you get confused. You think it's a V. So when you think it's a V, remember that it's an N. There is no such thing as a V in Greek. Okay, so if you think it's a V, it'll be like, hang on a minute, Duncan said there is no V in Greek. Then we got this one. This is a Z, as in the X in axe. Okay, C or Xi, Xi. Okay, now this is hard because it looks like joined up writing for a big E, capital E, but it's not, it's a Xi. So, so it's quite hard, this one. Then you've got Omicron, nice and easy. The O in not, O, oh, it's a short O. Omega is a long O, and this one's a short O. When I was taught Greek, I was taught pr to pronounce them differently. I've noticed a lot of people these days just pronounce them all the same. Wouldn't worry about it too much. I heard that Greek scholars can't actually chat to one another in Koine Greek or Classical Greek because there's so many different pronunciations, they wouldn't understand one another. So don't worry about it too tough. Then we've got P, and you all want to say pi. I know, it's hard. You want to say pi, and you'll think, uh, why, why, Duncan? And you might even be tempted to rebel, and when you get home, say, <laughs> say pi. But, but really, um, people will laugh at you. Greek guys will laugh at you if you say P. So when you hear your physics teacher say pi, just snigger and be like, huh. yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. Right, then we've got rho. This it looks like a P, but it's an R sound. Rho. R as in rent. R. So when you think it's a P, it's a R sound. That's quite hard to get used to. Then we've got sigma. S as in set. It's a, now you notice there's two different ways of writing sigma on your alphabet sheet. Okay. Um, you know both of them, you'll be fine. We might come on to that later. They're both S. Then we've got Tau, which is a T as in tent. It's pronounced Tau, not Tor. Although when I was taught Greek, I, I was actually taught classical Greek. I had to learn Koine Greek later. Um, but it, we was taught Tor, but it's actually Tau. So just think of a Tau. Put a Tau on, that's, that's what it is. That's a T. Then you've got Upsilon. Now you're thinking it's a U, but it's more of a double O, as in hoops. So think of basketball when you get to Upsilon. And think of the hoops. It's the oo sound, oopsilon. Then we've got phi, 
as in phone, the PH sound, phi. That's nice and easy, that one. Then after it, you've got key, as in chemical. Okay, key as in chemical. Now it's also, if you see on your handouts there, what have I written there? Lock. Yeah, yeah lock. If you're Scottish, Scottish, um, you will be able to say this. It's that lock that they sound or the, the German sound they do. I have great difficulty with doing this. I, to be honest, I don't do it myself. I find it too painful. I find if you try it in a sermon, you get a dry mouth and it's just harder to preach afterwards. But if you can do that, God bless you. D to make sure you do it. Then we got this one, psi. Psi, yeah? Think of lips, that sound, lips. But if you say it at the begin begin beginning of the word, it would be like Poseidon or pseudo, that kind of word. Okay, psi. Then finally, we got omega, which everyone knows, which is home. The, sorry, the long O in home, the O, as opposed to the O, which is the Omicron. But you can pronounce them both the same if you want. It's very interesting textual variant in Romans where it said some manuscripts have a word written with an Omicron and some have it written with an Omega. And the difference in translation is Paul saying, we have peace with God or him saying, let us have peace with God. And it's really hard because the manuscripts are pretty divided between some have written with an Omicron, some of them are written with an O. But that one letter makes a big difference. Is Paul saying, come on guys, have peace with God? Or is he saying, guys, we have peace with God? So we look at that kind of stuff later. Um, it's just one, one letter's difference. But if you don't pronounce them differently, then you could see the problem there. If we were as a scriptorium here, and Ephraim's over there reading out the manuscript, and we're all scribes copying it down, we've just heard him say echo men. Now it's like, is that echo men with the O being an omega or an omicron? Maybe half of us in the room are going to write it with an Omicron and half of us write it with an Omega. Now, what did Jesus say about Omega? I am the Alpha and the Omega. So you can see quite clearly there. Alpha is at the beginning and next you've got Omega. Okay, great. Right. Pop quiz then. What is this letter? Good. Okay, what is this letter? Eta. Well done, well done. What about this one? This one? Okay, good, yeah. This one? Gamma. Um, what about this one? Xi. Xi. Yeah. Xi. You'll be chatting to people on the street and you'll be going, Xeen. Could be the new street talk for the church in London. Xeen. Yeah, well, I think I'm going to pattern that. Right, okay, well done, everyone. Let's try the alphabet song one more time. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, P, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Ki, Psi, Omega. Wonderful, wonderful. Courtney's got a very good C there. Okay. <laughs> we were going to do some of these letters, but I think you guys, are, you guys have got it, haven't you? Are you comfortable with the alphabet at the moment? And what's this one? <laughs> that's the C. C, that's right. What's that one? <laughs> that one? Eta. Yeah. Key, or if you can do that, then do it. It's painful. Key. Fi. Mu or mu. Theta. Zeta, which is pronounced as a Z or as a DZ at times, like words like baptizo. Okay, great. Now, let's move on to the next thing. 
Right. Um, you know what? We're not going to do this exercise because you guys are doing so well. So we're not going to do this one. We're going to save time. And we're going we're gonna to move on to the next one. We're going to look at diphthongs. Notice we haven't done capital letters. I'll let you do that one in your own time. Uh, a lot of them are the same. Some of them are a bit different. Uh, Lambda is a bit confusing in the capital letters, but I'll let you do that in your own time. Uh, you don't really need to know capital letters too tough, apart from the first word at the beginning of a sentence. If you want to read Greek manuscripts, you have to learn the capital letters really well, because back in the day, that was how they wrote. Capital letters, no spaces, no punctuation. Just everything together. Uh, if you think that's hard, you can always try it at home. Go open Word and type out something in all capital letters with no spaces or punctuation, and then imagine that being in Greek, and that's how you've got to read Greek manuscripts, which are called uncials. It's very hard. Okay, when you've got these two letters together and their vowel sounds together, they make their own sound. So this first one here, right, is a I sound, okay? An alpha and iota together is an I. Then you've got a, what's this letter? Epsilon and an iota, which is A. A. Then you've got this one. Oi. Oi. Then you've got ow. Next you've got oo. And then this one is we. We, as in French. Oui, oui, monsieur. Or as in sweet. Okay, we. Oui. Then you've got you, as in feud. Okay. Right. In fact, I've even got a nice little computer dude here who will say it. You. There you go. You. You. So, there you go. So, everyone pronounce the first one for me. A. I. 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 Next one. A. 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 That's right. You. Okay, good. Those are diphthongs, so you, you need to know how to pronounce them. When you see them together, that is how they work. Now, next. We're going to have some fun now. We're going to split up into split up into teams. Now, split up into twos, okay? So you're a two, 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 you're a two. Now, they tell you in teacher training you shouldn't put people into pairs because they said it's a ridiculous thing to say to kids. Split into pairs, like, I am a pair. You know, how, how do you do that? So, right, you're, you know your teams, right? Time starts now. Work out what this saying is. Remember, work together in your pairs. Right, who thinks they got it? Okay, you guys said you got it first. What have you got? Honesty is the, is the best policy. Okay, good. Here we go. Honesty is the best policy. How do you get that so quick, man? It's transliteration. Okay, yeah, this is transliteration. Unfortunately, this isn't the way Greek works. <laughs> if it did, we'd be laughing. We'd be learning Greek in no time. But it's a good way to learn the letters. Okay, next one. Right, see if you can beat Io and James. <clears throat> Richard's got the right idea, writing it down. Yeah, what have you got? There you go. Familiarity breeds contempt. <laughs> These are some old school sayings here. Okay, next one. What were you going to say, James? Here we go. The pen is mightier than the sword. Everyone see that? 
<laughs> All right, what we do, the next one, right? Put your hand up when you've got the answer, but don't shout out the answer. <clears throat> you probably won't even notice saying anyway. Have you got it? One, one team's got it so far. Got a bit of a hot group in the middle there. Eh? Future Greek scholars. <coughs> yeah, this is a good one because it's hard to guess it because you've probably never heard it before. <coughs> Does anyone think they've got some of it? What have you guys got? Misfortune. Misfortune. Anyone got the next word? Makes. That's right. Makes. Foes of friends. Misfortune makes foes of friends. That was a hard one because you can't. Anyone heard that before? No, me neither. See if you could do this one without writing anything down. What's the first word? Better. Next word? Is it by or be? Iota. B. B. Alone. Alpha lam- lambda. Omega. Better be alone. Than in bad company. Better to be alone than in bad company. Right. I'm looking for the quick, uh, quickest answer on this one. Yeah. What is it? A good beginning makes a good ending. There you go. Ending. Now, remember the two gammas together is an NG sound. Okay, so that's why a good beginning makes a good ending. So that first word, how would you pronounce that? Anger. Anger, that's right. It's not agar, it's anger, because there's two gammas together. Anger is brief. brief. Madness. Madness. <laughs> yeah. I know you're using these phrases all the time, isn't it? All the time on road. What about this one? <laughs> Just say that to someone else. Say, bruv, anger is brief madness. Great Grief's a Mute. Had you heard that one before? Well done then. Well, because that's a hard one because you're thinking it can't mean that. But it does. Right. This is a good one. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. No, that is not it. <laughs> you just lost all your points. <laughs> why, why are you guys saying luck? What does the oopsalon sound like? Ooh, hoops. <laughs> Look before you leap. I know it's a lot of people struggling with the iota sound, the, the, the I sound, the E, iota, E, leap. That's right, you, you. Like sweet. Yeah. You. Mm. Before you 
lit. Yeah. Because they could have just done without the yield to the Then it would have been ooh, look before ooh, leap. Okay. Of course, because there's no Jason. Now, I'm going to tell you what this one is. Yeah. Pennies make dollars. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of vocab now. Um, here we go. Anyone want to try saying that word? Christos. Christos. Now, now, where, now, where is the accent? Oh, uh, yeah. The accent is on the Omicron, so you say Christos. Yes? Not Christos. So that little dash is accent. That's an accent. Oh, okay. Yeah? Now, don't worry about the different kinds of accents. Just know when you see an accent, you emphasize that word. So it's Christos. Everyone say it? Christos. Great. Like when you say it, bruv, then when okay, well, we're, we're mute our friend then. Uh, that's a okay, <laughs> now, wh what does it mean? What does it mean? Christ. Christ, there you go. Yeah. Congratulations. All right, this word, someone pronounce it. Kai. Kai. And what does it mean? It means and or even. Okay, uh, you're going to find this word all over the shop, so you need to know this word, and or even. Now, ego. Now, have you noticed ego? Ego, because there's an accent on the omega. Now, look at the E. You see, it's got what's called a breathing mark. Now, it's pointing to the left, which means you don't pronounce a rough breathing. Have you noticed there's no H in the alphabet so far? Mm. Now, if that breathing mark was pointing the other way, it would mean there's an H and it would be hego. Oh. But because it's facing left, it's showing us don't do a rough breathing on it. So it's ego. That'll make more sense when we come to one that does pronounce an H and then you'll be like, okay. So what does ego mean? Uh, well, yeah, that's where it comes from. That's where Freud's whole thing comes from. It means I. I. Okay. How do you pronounce this? Theos. Theos. There you go. What does it mean? God. God. Okay. I. A lot of people think it means I. No. Sorry. So bad joke. Um. <laughs> What's it? How do you <laughs> how do you pronounce this word? Anthropos. Man. Yeah, that's right. Man. Anthropology. Study of man. Okay. What about this word? That's right. Our main. Our main. The accent is on the eta. Our main. What does our main mean? Truly, verily. Jesus says it. Our main. Our main. There's one translation that says our main, which says, Amen, amen, I say to you. Which is hard for people to understand, but it's Jesus saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, or verily. Okay, what about this one? Prophetes. Prophetes. What do you think it means? Prophet, yeah. Okay, what about this one? Okay, now do it with the accent. Cardia. What does it mean? Heart, yeah. Cardiovascular and millions of other words with, with cardio in. Yeah, so now you know where that's from. So that's heart, cardia. Word comes up a lot in the New Testament. Lego. Lego. Le sorry, how did I say it? I should say Lego. 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 Yeah. Lego. You get confused with the, you think of your childhood and playing with Lego, but it's Lego. Okay, that means I say. I say. Not as in I say, but as in I say to someone or I am saying. Okay, very close, but take out the Angela thing and you've got, yeah. Angelos, that's right. Angelos, what does it mean? Angel. angel, that's right. Angel or messenger. Which is what's used in the address to the seven churches in Revelation. Okay, right. So, now looking at that list, which one is God? Okay, let's pronounce it correctly. Theos. Congratulations. What's the word for truly and verily? Our main. Well done. That's a moon, um, Richard. Moon. Moon. It actually looks like a 
Okay, what about angel? Angelos. That's right. I. Ego. Ego. And or even? Kai. Kai. It's the word for and or even. It, can, it also has other meanings as well. It's a pretty big word. Heart. Cardia. Well done. And man. Anthropos. Prophet. Nice, easy one. Just looking for, there you go. Prophetes. Remember, it's an eta. It's got that A sound. What about the verb for I say? Lego. Lego. What about Christ? Christos. Christos. Well done. Okay, well, that's a bit of vocab. Now, with vocab, um, it's good to know vocab. But here's the thing. This is what I thought for a long time. I thought, if I learn loads of vocab, I will be able to read the Bible in Greek. Now, here's the thing. What I want you guys to learn is how to use the right tools to find out what the vocab means. Scholars, when they're studying the Bible in Greek, they don't just always be like, oh, I know what that mo word means. It means such and such. They look up that word and they see every other instance it's used in the New Testament and in early church writings. And then they're like, okay, this is what this word means here. You see, so it's not just about being like, oh, I know that word. That word means um, angel. Instead, then you say, okay, we're in the book of Revelation now. Does this word mean angel or messenger? How is this word used in the rest of Revelation? Is John being consistent when he uses this word or is he changing the meaning now? And, and that's what you do when you study it. So the thing isn't to fill your head with as many words as possible. The thing is to know how to use a tool so you can see what these words mean. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to do how to do Greek word studies.